For Global Business Update, Michael Wilson joins us now from London. Great to have you, Michael. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thanks very much indeed. Yeah, um, Asian markets uh, pretty mixed as they begin the week. China has uh, surprised everybody again by uh, another couple of uh, rate cuts. It cut its uh, benchmark lending rates. Uh, Hong Kong therefore up, Shanghai Composite up very, very slightly indeed. Uh, Chinese Central Bank cut its, uh, its one-day benchmark lending rate by five basis points to 3.65%. It's a uh, five-year oh, rate by 15 um, basis 4.3. Uh, last week, basically, um, the, the People's Bank of China did exactly the same kind of thing. Um, it's aiming to support long-term borrowing in the mortgage market. Um, there's plenty of credit now. This is what analysts actually think, but there's little demand to take it up. That's the problem. And this, this sort of lack of growth in consumer spending is heading to once high-flying tech companies like Alibaba and Tencent. They've been focusing on cutting costs across the board, and they've been getting rid of non-core businesses. Um, they, they both, um, if you remember last week, posted results which sort of pointed towards uh, this. The, the, these freewheeling and high-flying uh, giant companies are no longer quite the sort of companies that they were. And that's to do with the COVID-induced economic slowdown in China. That's what economists are saying. Um, U.S. recap. Uh, yeah, so Wall Street basically is looking ahead to the Jackson Hole uh, Bank, Central Bankers Symposium. That's August 25th to 27th, i.e. Thursday to Saturday. Uh, and so what we're seeing is futures actually slightly falling um, as we get into their market open towards our lunchtime time um, today. It could be a very volatile week. Um, we're really waiting to see what Jay Powell says about inflation and so on. I'll give you a bit more detail about that to towards the end of my report. Um, as far as um, the world's largest sovereign wealth fund is concerned, and this is the Norwegian uh, oil fund, 1.2 trillion. You remember that last week um, it had its biggest uh, half year dollar loss but what they're actually saying now is is, is is just as important as that they're saying that cyber security eclipses the worries of tumultuous markets they they suffer a hundred thousand attacks every year um, a thousand of those are felt to be what they just Describe as serious, so that's three a day basically. Um, and this is down to uh, Nikolai Tengen, who's the CEO, um, and he said that uh, you know this is a very very serious problem. I think most companies understand this now, and most people are, are discussing this kind of thing at uh, boardroom level. But it's not going to get any better. As far as the UK is concerned, um, the U the US the the UK leadership thing continues. Liz Truss uh, promising help for energy costs uh, across the board, and we get the new. Um, cap on how high prices can actually go on Friday from off gem quasi quateng has been now he is now business secretary but he may well be chancellor should Liz Truss that, that's the kind of feeling should Liz Truss get the leadership and he's actually saying been a lot, lot of talk in the newspapers over the weekend saying that help is coming uh, not only for businesses but also households for its particular um, view on it Sunak's camp is now saying well how can she actually do it they're not saying anything different really but his he's saying that you can't have tax cuts and you can't have more public spending at the same time um, the Felix Stowe dock workers first strike for 30 years um, it's important this one because it can't it can it, 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 it can it uses or it, it, it helps 48 percent of con container trade um, in the UK, 1,900 uh, workers of the Unite Union, they rejected a 7% um, pay increase. Uh, City World, the troubled, uh, as its name suggests, uh, cinema chain um, is probably going to go for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in the United States. They're saying that as far as actual people wanted to go to the pictures are concerned, that operation is still continuing in the UK, but they are filing for um, bankruptcy protection uh, in the United States. So the week ahead then, uh, Jackson Hole Symposium, um, the years, uh, this is the annual meeting basically of central banks. This one's called Reassessing Constraints on the Economy and Policy. Um, I think that what people waiting for this chat 
Jay Powell to say is to explain whether he feels as though the concerns about over tightening a market which is clearly uh, uh, on, on top of an economy which is clearly uh, in technical recession is actually going to work or not whether they'll be hawkish or dovish you know the normal kind of thing and on that we'll get the US um, quarter second quarter GDP figures as I said the, the economy there is technically in recession we aren't going to learn an enormous about uh, about the US economy but um, um, we'll get we'll get a, we'll get a rough idea of where spending is probably headed or has been headed for that back to the uk we get flash pmis here um april uh, in on on the 22nd which is later today uh and um august is traditionally a relatively slow period again i don't think it's going to tell us an enormous about what an enormous amount about what's going on and finally germany gets its ifo its ifo uh business climate um Thing on the 24th uh, of this week uh, and water levels in the Rhine as you know subsiding so um, trade there not actually doing very much energy ration take already in some German states and the business climate um, probably uh, will will go will be going down um, continually and that really is about optimism in what ought to be uh, Germ uh, the, Europe's largest performing economy uh, no longer is as we as we will see probably um, later in the week that's the global view this morning right real quickly uh, Michael what do you think uh, leading up to the Jackson Hole meeting, what, what kind of advice do you think somebody like Alan Greenspan will give at a period in time like this? And, and what's your take as regards Michael Gove coming out to say that least trust is not being sincere as regards those tax cuts. It's going to plunge the UK into more problems. Like I have always shouted, at least somebody is listening. And now that's why he's supporting Rishi Sunak. Yeah, I, I mean, as far as that's concerned, I think a lot of people actually in Liz Truss's team, if you read the newspapers here this morning, are actually saying, well, you know, it's a really high risk strategy. They're not saying it won't work. And, you, you, you know, these days, you know, any, anything, anything is possible. But I, I would stick to the old Margaret Thatcher dictum that no government actually owns any money. It's only what goes in and what what comes out. It's all that it's all how they deal with what they manage to squeeze from us in terms of taxes so I think it's it's pretty it's pretty high risk um, as far as uh, uh, the United States is concerned yeah I feel as though it's going to be quite interesting to see what Jerome Powell says about the economy I can't really comment further than that I know what I'll be looking for I'll know it when I see it but I think it's going to be next week isn't it before we before we get any idea of what the, these central bankers are actually saying I think a Apart from obviously the central bank in Turkey, uh, that that um, you know tightening is is the only way forward. I still happen to feel it's a very clumsy instrument. The first is uh, U.S. Uh, and Taiwan. After Nancy Pelosi's uh, visit to Taiwan, despite China's objection, uh, we understand the governor of Indiana State is also going that way. Now, is uh, the U.S. using Taiwan as a pawn? even if the Americans will not readily admit that, and are we likely to have, you know, a dangerous situation uh, why we have not resolved the one between uh, Russia and Ukraine in that axis. Second thing, what else do we need to know about inflation? I mean, you talked about US, um, you know, UK, continental Europe, you know, Canada, 8.1%, uh, UK, 10.1%, and all of that. Here in Nigeria, we have 19.64%. But in Zimbabwe, Inflation has gone up from 191% to 257% in July. Now the government of Zimbabwe is saying they are going to introduce gold coins as legal tender. Where are the people going to find the gold coins from? And if inflation is at 257% in a particular country, do we still have a country there? And finally, the IMF is saying that it must get guarantees uh, for it to be able to help uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, from Japan, from India, from uh, China, uh, because uh, uh, Sri Lanka's debt is unsustainable. What is the debt? Over 20 billion uh, US dollars. And they are just asking from IMF, just uh, between two, two billion dollars and three billion dollars. Uh, is there any hope that IMF will ever come to the rescue of Sri Lanka? Uh, as, as, as I understand, 
suggested it last week and again touched on it very very briefly i thought that what had happened was that the sri lankan central bank governor um had actually said that they were get they were trying to get the economy into shape and then going back to the imf to talk about how that might proceed so any kind of thought about the imf saying well before we get in we want guarantees from other countries that are going to help sri lanka I, i'm i'm not too sure about that i mean that that may be that may be happening it's not the way the imf um tends to work it tends to use is what it regards as its own fund and its own uh, persuasions to try to get com countries to um to, to to become solvent again or at least appear to be solvent again in the same way that it did with greece um all, all those um years ago zimbabwe al already a complete mystery to me i mean i i have no idea how it survives all i know from friends who live in south africa is if you want a mercedes in zimbabwe i know you know I know somebody who can get one. So it's like that. It's the rich and the poor. I, I, I do feel as though they, they've just lost touch with reality. How a country can survive on those kind of inflation rates, heaven only knows. And I mean, it's been going on. It seems to have been going on throughout my complete lifetime. It hasn't really. I mean, I, 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 I know where the rock set in uh, and i know i know what was happening there and, and the south africans do not want to see a similar kind of land grab happening uh, there that happened in zimbabwe that's always what they think the the real shame about zimbabwe is not so much these sort of isolated inflation figures and the rest of it it's that the people themselves are some of the most highly educated uh, and it, on, on the african continent highly prized as workers highly prized as businessmen and yet they have this this circus happening at home which is is just I, i've got no idea how it's sustainable and i fully share your concerns about gold coins how ridiculous is that they've, they've had how many how many currencies have they actually tried they've had their own they've had a, a dollar currency um they've had a combined currency i, I just it, it, it just looks like a like like a, like a complete complete circus and finally to taiwan yes i'm with you on that I, I i feel it's ludicrous for for people who have no idea about what they're doing to be going to talk to taiwan if i were china i'd i'd, I'd regard it i'd be laughing at them basically i mean what what on earth did nancy pelosi say to to taiwan itself what on earth would biden say come to think of it all all these are really just headed towards the november midterm elections i was talking to one of our friends yesterday today who's a very highly regarded um, educator in the United States and she was saying you know it, again it's just away from a, away from reality and, and and what what happens what happens to Taiwan what happens in Ukraine is is being decided by other forces not by the United States however much they feel as though they can get involved in international relations it's just not working thank you so much Michael really appreciate you for your time uh, we go now to business updates across the African continent. Uh, Rotus Sudiri joins us. Great to have you, Rotus. How's it going? Fine, thank you. Good morning, uh, Rafai. Good morning, Good morning uh, Doctor. Good morning to all our viewers. Yeah, it's all uh, aviation and trade we're talking about this morning. The uh, National uh, Assembly has, uh, in House of Reps, has invited uh, a number of um, government officials and private sector players to discuss uh, this planned withdrawal of services by uh, Emirates. If we take a look at the list, um, they've invited the uh, uh, Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed. They've also invited Godwin Emefele, Central Bank Governor, Jumoke Oduole, Special Advisor to the President on Ease of Doing Business. They've invited Hadi Sirika, Minister of Aviation, then uh, Captain Musa Shwaibu Nuhu, who is the uh, MDC uh, Director General and the CEO of the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, and then also uh, IATA, the country representative, International Air Transport Association, and then uh, Emirates uh, country manager. They haven't given a date as to when this uh, meeting will take place. Uh, not sure if everybody will show up, um, but they've already had meetings in the past with respect to what happened with jet fuel and uh, all these other issues that the foreign exchange that the aviation sector is facing. So uh, one has to see whether or not this uh, meeting will, will yield fruit. So we'll wait for further updates as to, um, as to whether or not they show up. Um, still on the same matter, but former Senator of uh, Bielsa East, uh, Ben Murray Bruce, he says that now that foreign airlines are leaving the country, 
Now is the time that we enhance our local carriers to fly internationally. Now is the time to show patriotism. Uh, he continues and says, if necessary, a law must be passed to compel public servants to fly our national carriers. Anything outside of this is instant dismissal. The only exception is if our national carrier doesn't fly that route. And then he says that um, when it happens, he says when, not if, uh, if you see any government official flying any foreign airline on a route that our national carriers fly, Snap a picture of them and shame them, enough is enough. So the key the question here, and by the way, we have a full um, panel on the global business report from uh, 11 to 12 noon, where we have talking to a number of private sector uh, players as to whether or not domestic airlines have the capacity to fill in the gaps. We actually need it because of the amount of money that we spend on travel. I think between the first quarter of this year, uh, for according to the balance of payments data from the central bank, we spent anywhere from $1.5 billion to $2.5 billion on travel. So a majority of the airlines, international airlines in this country, are basically repatriating their funds, which means that you, are a net, um, you have a net negative when it comes to um, what it is that goes out versus what comes in with respect to travel. But looking at this, as far as capacity is concerned, it needs to be um, emphasized that Emirates is backed by the government of the UAE. That's their majority shareholder. And just to put things into perspective, the aviation support that Emirates got from the UAE was $4 billion. $4 billion. And they said they will start paying that back in the form of dividends. I think they said they'll start paying it in May or June. Meanwhile, the Nigerian government gave $4 billion naira to the entire aviation industry. And we had Alan Onyema, um, CEO of Airpeace, who said that's not even enough to buy one engine for one plane. So, you know, if you now put into perspective the maintenance costs, whether or not we can get um, those maintenance checks to be done here in this country, whether or not they can fill in the routes. I think Emirates has about, they had about 11, I think they're going to cut it down to seven now, they're not flying anymore. But the, there's a necessary, there's a need, which brings up Nigeria Air. And, you know, yes, um, there's been um, issues with respect to the delays and whether or not we have the capacity to, you know, put this airline up in the air. And they're saying that um, um, I think third quarter is what Hadi Sirika has been aiming for. But again, I bring this up again. Our FX bill for services is really, really high. And if you get domestic airlines in the same way that the Dangote refinery saves you on having to import um, um, uh, refined petroleum products with a heavy FX bill, if you can get Nigerian Airlines with the capacity to fly these routes, then you save yourself the amount of FX that is attempting to be repatriated out of the country. IATA says it's 464 million as at um, July that's trapped in Nigeria. Other sources say it's now at about 600 million and it could reach a billion, um, billion dollars by the end of the year. So um, this, is, this is now comes to the fork. Can we you know, step up with domestic airlines? And then do we even have to, another argument is do we even have to fl fl float in Nigeria air? Can we, we already have, Amcon already controls um, aero contractors uh, and, and other, uh, I think Arik as well. So, and so, can we not just allow those airlines, of course, now they are pretty at less, I think about 38% capacity. Airpeace has a number of, of, of air for fleets. The Spring Alliance, can that allow those fleets to be shared? So there's a whole lot that needs to go on there. Um, still on aviation, uh, Dak Wabiodun, governor of Ogun State, he has this, the planned um, agro cargo um, airports in Ogun State, which he says uh, is now also going to allow for commercial flights um, to land there. Understand the, he says the um, Nigerian, the Air Force and also the customs are looking at setting up operational bases in Ogun State to take advantage of this cargo airport. We should also allow for commercial flights. Um, to allow, he says they started construction in March and I believe it's going to be ready by December. Uh, this was started by the previous, uh, uh, the Amosho administration, but then he's, he's now continuing it. And to allow residents of Ogun State to fly commercially without having to come to Lagos. Uh, Ogun State, as you know, has uh, what? Oil, palm, cassava, cola nuts, and so on and so forth. They've got a number of things they can export with the cargo, um, cargo airport. So it's all about trade, 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 foreign exchange. Finally, in Egypt, uh, Mercedes is... Um, on their way to um, setting up a logistics hub uh, at the Suez Canal Economic Zone, same thing, to allow them to be able to export their vehicles uh, across the world. So that's what we're looking at as far as the business update across the continent uh, is concerned. All right, Rotus. Yes, Nigerian airlines can step up to the plate. But the question is, you don't just have airlines fly. 
you have an airline ecosystem. Right. And that's what the likes of Ethiopian Airline has been able to build. With the government support, they built an ecosystem, they can service their place, they can do all that. And the money they've get, they got, they've been able to do the cost economics and do their work well. Mm. But here, why we're struggling is because when you look at it, the market can be improved upon. It's not improved upon. $1.5 billion, the entire flying market. $4 billion. That was what Emirates got. All right? We've not developed... Well, $4 million. Dollars. Yeah, $4 million. $4 million, billion, 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 billion naira. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> we've not developed the ecosystem enough to to service planes here, cut a lot of costs that we go free time away abroad in Forex and all of that. We've not set up refineries that can churn out aviation fuel so we can have competitive pricing rather than going to import and get forex problem. You see, the biggest problem with Nigeria, and that's why when a lot of people come out and talk all the things they talk, I just look at them and laugh, is the fact that Nigerians are the biggest importers. Why I hope we change that to a production economy. We are very big on consumption. We are. What has killed the airline sector and the other sectors is consumption. And we ought to be able to do those things within. So even if you set up that thing and in like local airlines trying to, you know, fight and, and churn out planes and all of that, they will still struggle because one, access to finance is a big problem. How many banks will give them the money? Secondly, most of the, uh, what is it called, um, deliverables, yeah. you have to go abroad to service. Yeah, that's a big issue. And only to think that the first plane landed in Nigeria in 1922 mm. in Kano. And since then, we've not done anything. Nigerian Airways pretty much started in the early 50s. But guess what? Brazil created an airline ecosystem. Ten years after we started Nigerian Airways, they started something called Embraer, that makes one of the biggest airline makers yeah. in the world today, that makes planes. Yeah. So we need to set up those things in place. I'm not saying we'll make planes in the next five, ten years, but maybe in 15, 20 years, if we put up the ecosystem, we service the plane, we do everything, why can't we have a plane made in Nigeria? Mm. Anything is possible. But we don't have those ecosystem in place. No aviation for no, no, no. Because you see, when you talk to the, the airline operators, these are the things they're going to tell you. The challenges, look at the cost of flights. It's doubled. Over the weekend, it's doubled. Yeah. Why? Because of aviation fuel. But if we had a refinery somewhere here that turns out aviation fuel, we have more than enough. We'll be supplying the West African market. Mm. Nigeria can actually be the West African hub of airline, but the part, the role the government needs to play, it needs to play that role. Because look at all other countries, it's the government too that is shielding them. Yeah. So you can have, you know, and these in industries are interconnected. Ruth, I was reading one day and I discovered that United Airlines in America, the, the one of the founders was actually William Boeing. How about that? How about that? <laughs> it was actually William Boeing. It's so we, we have a cross mix that we need to do that we've not done it. But if we get our acts right, I still believe, like Napoleon once said about China, that China is a sleeping giant. I still believe if we get that out Nigeria is a sleeping giant. Once it works, it will shake the world because it's got potential, capacity. Mm. We just need people to put things in place and it works wonders. Yeah. Just like Mercedes is doing in Egypt, you know, to be able to leverage across the Suez Canal, it will export and things like that. We too should think in words. Mm. I see greatness in this country. Okay, first, let's say charity begins. At home. At home. So let me start with Ogun State and the Agro Cargo Airport. Uh, that uh, Governor Dakwabiodun uh, reported. Ilishon Remo. Ilishon Remo. Now, Thank that you. Uh, Agro Cargo Airport, I, you know, I guess it's good to hear that uh, you know, it will be commissioned in December. Yeah. And I assume directly that the politics around it, because there was big politics around it in terms of location mm. between the Egba people and the Remo people, mm. and whether the project should have been situated. Uh, in uh, Wasemi, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is within Egba territory, or in the Remo territory where the uh, governor, uh, incumbent governor, and the vice president of Nigeria yeah. at the moment are uh, both hail from. But, you know, I assume that now maybe the mat that matter has been laid to rest, and we look forward to the project being commissioned uh, in December. Uh, location notwithstanding, as I've argued in a previous uh, uh, article on the subject, uh, this will be of great benefit uh, to not just the people of Ogun State, but also for trade, for interconnectedness yes. of trade yes. across, uh, you, know, uh, you know, the regions interconnected with uh, Ogun State. 
Um, Ogun State is the major gateway to Nigeria. It is. You know, towards the Republic of Benin. Mm. Uh, it's also the gateway to the north, to the east. You know, you have to pass through Ogun State. So an agro-cargo airport in Ogun State will reduce uh, pressure on Lagos mm -hmm. um, because then people will have an alternative. Uh, beyond that also, it will mean that Ogun State will be benefiting from its consanguinity, you know, with Lagos State, which yeah. is a major advantage for Ogun State. Uh, as the governor pointed out, more jobs will be created. Now that commercial airlines say they will also take advantage of that particular infrastructure when it is completed, I think that will also be good news uh, for whoever is, uh, you know, in Ogun State. In terms of revenue, yes. in terms of opportunities for the people also. So I'm, I'm sure that all eyes will be on this and that uh, Governor Abiodun will be able to meet uh, the deadline that he has uh, announced. However, he also used the opportunity to give an account of his stewardship so far to community leaders and associations in all the uh, 20 local government areas uh, in terms of roads that he has constructed, other infrastructure that he has uh, you know, provided. Being a politician, he sees that opportunity <laughs> to also. Remind people. You know, to remind people of what he has done. So yes. that's fine. But the bigger picture is the benefit, you know, that will accrue uh, to society, to communities, to the state, and even to the Nigerian government, and the pressure on Lagos that will be reduced. Now, that's that. As for the uh, House of Representatives uh, summoning stakeholders to come and talk about the reasons why foreign airlines are suspending operations, as uh, Emirates has threatened that it will do so from September 1, or reducing the scope of their engagement with Nigeria as Turkish Airlines has announced uh, with regard to categories of uh, tickets that will be sold to uh, uh, Nigerians. Yes, I think that the House of Reps is perfectly in order uh, trying to make uh, uh, that oversight intervention. But what are the issues in contention? One, the foreign airlines saying that they have up to the tune of about $600 million trapped mm. in Nigeria because they cannot repatriate uh, uh, funds. The local airlines talking about the high cost of aviation fuel yep. and the cost of doing business and the fact that this has become a, different, a difficult environment to do business, resulting in a situation whereby uh, Airpis has had to suspend its flights uh, to South Africa. Yep. I hope that the uh, airline operators of Nigeria will also be included in this meeting and that the focus will cover the, all the issues in contention and not just about the foreign airlines. However, there's another side to the story. Some stakeholders within the aviation sector are alleging that the foreign airlines are trying to blackmail the Nigerian government mm. and that the Nigerian government must not succumb to any form of blackmail. They are talking about forex repatriation. The question that has been raised consistently by the airline operators of Nigeria is that they also have forex issues. And that if they have access to Forex through the central bank, if they have some concessions in that regard, then it will be easier for them to operate because all their inputs are, are uh, dollar denominated. Yes. Okay? So what those stakeholders are saying is that what is good for the foreign airlines is also good for the domestic operators. And so in considering all of this, I hope that the uh, you know, House of Representatives uh, Committee will carry the concerns on both sides uh, along. Because uh, what the uh, stakeholders are saying is that government has not done enough, and you pointed that out in the figures you gave, for the domestic airline operators, mm. who in fact are now charging an arm and a leg. If anybody that goes to board a flight in Nigeria today, it's a big man. <laughs> all the people who used to buy uh, all these uh, 15,000 naira tickets that they will buy one month uh, ahead of time. You can't do that anymore. Exactly. And if you travel on the roads, you are not uh, you are you are not safe either. So these are the issues that we think that they will take on board and look at. How do we save the aviation industry? Whatever measures will be adopted must also be fair to the uh, local operators. Uh, the common sense uh, senator, uh, senator Ben Murray Ben Murray Bruce. Bruce says that well, there must be some legislation to say government officials must fly. Uh, you know only. Uh, domestic airlines, you know, that are Nigerian. Well, I mean, that's patriotism. I mm -hmm. agree with him. The Americans, if you were to go for a program uh, in the U.S., is the uh, uh, United Airlines, American Airlines, yeah. you know, supported by government that they will allow you to travel on, you know. So government must support our airlines. Nobody can argue 
uh, with that. Yeah. All right. See how things work right. out. Thank you so much.